It's 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 7 degrees Celsius. Can you pour concrete when it's freezing outside like this? Hang right on, we're going to tell you in a minute. Yeah, you heard me right. It's well below freezing out this morning, and we got to get this floor poured. There's actually two floors here, one on each side. This is a big basement. It's going to be a crawl space, so when when the ends up building this, there's only going to be about three feet of headroom down here. So luckily, our job today is to get this poured, get it bull floated nice and smooth, and then we can just leave it. He can let it set up and then cover it before it gets nighttime again. It's about 7 a.m. in the morning right now, and it's... We live in Maine, which is in the northeastern part of the United States, and in November, this is mid-November, the overnight temps usually get below freezing, and then the daytime temps will get up just a little bit above the freezing temperature, so it'll allow, you know, for this to set all day long without him having to cover it, and then, you know, by the time dark rolls around, usually gets dark around 4.30 p.m. this time of year, he's going to have to put some tarps over this and some hay just to keep it from freezing overnight. Now the part with the yellow you see has got two inches of styrofoam under it. The yellow is the vapor barrier and that's the only parts that we're pouring concrete on. He wanted to try to get as much of this floor flat as possible. There's a lot of ledge in this area so the part of the the part of the floor you see that has some crushed stone there and off to the right you'll see a big rock sticking up. That's That's what we call ledge. So he had a lot of that ledge in this basement, and he wanted to try to get whatever he could poured flat, is just poured flat so he could use it for storage or whatever. And that white thing you see over there where I'm magging uh, the edges right there and I'm holding the grade stick right here in front of you, that white thing you see me magging around is going to be for a chimney, so it's kind of a, a base for a chimney pad. And he didn't want us to do anything with that. He said he was going to pour some concrete inside that later on. And then he'll have a mason come and put up some type of brick or stone chimney that'll go right up through the center of the building. So that's why we're just pouring around that thing. Now Luke and Darren are over there pouring on a little bit of a little part that's elevated. So I'm assuming that had some rock that stuck up a certain height, and he just he just leveled it off with some crushed rock, and he poured wanted us to pour that little piece up just a little bit higher than the bottom piece so he could have a you know a flat piece right there to do whatever you put utilities on or or whatever he's going to do here in the basement and then you'll see a little bit later in the video where you know we'll move the camera over to the other side to the right where we've got another whole section over there we got to pour with us so this was about about a 2,000 square foot basement and all and then the parts the parts that were not pouring there the parts with the rock stuck up really high you know came up to about three to four hundred square feet something like that so I don't know what he'll do with that later on he may just he may just cover it with some poly for a vapor barrier and just leave it covered like that because by the time he decks us over there's only going to be uh, about 18 inches of headroom underneath there so probably no one's getting under there the tricky the, you know the tough thing for me pouring when it's when it's this cold out this much below zero is you know I've got I've got layers on I've got insulated pants on I've got you know a t-shirt on I've got an insulated shirt over that I've got a sweatshirt over that and then I've got my gray hoodie on over that so I've got four layers there plus the insulated pants uh, my feet the my feet don't usually get cold because the concrete's got warm water in it so your feet and your toes tend to stay warm but it's my hands and the tips of my fingers that get really cold it's hard it's hard to wear any any type of uh, like heated gloves in, in the concrete like this you've got to kind of just wear something that number one isn't going to get you know matter if it really gets wet or damp or dirty and then something you can grip onto those mags something that's not too thick so you can grip onto your tools and hold them pretty good so and rarely are you going to find something insulated that's going to help you out there if they're that thin so my, my fingers get cold pretty quick. You'll see me from time to time just take my hands out of my gloves and try try blowing on my fingers like I am right now. Just trying to warm them up so we can keep moving here without stopping. 
Now, if you're if you're thinking, well, if you just dump the concrete on the ground, isn't it going to start to freeze instantly? Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. It's uh, you know these guys these guys were the ready mix companies usually have a boiler with hot water that they they put right on the truck. So they'll put water anywhere from 100 degrees to 140 degrees on the truck. And then they'll mix, you know, they'll use that hot water when they batch the concrete into the truck. So the concrete's pretty warm. It's usually in the 60s Fahrenheit for temperatures when it's in the truck. So it doesn't, it doesn't freeze right up. So when we're laying it out here, if, if I would take a temperature gauge to it, it would probably be, this morning's temps would probably be high 50s to low 60s for concrete temps. So it's going to take a little while for that. Especially if it's sitting on styrofoam to cool off and and actually freeze. And then remember, heat dehydration. You know, concrete cures from heat, and it it produces a little bit of its own heat when the cement in the concrete comes in contact with water. You know, a chemical reaction takes place that produces heat. That's what causes concrete to cure. So it it's already creating a little bit of heat on its own. Then with the with the warm water or the hot water in there, that helps with that. And then if we add a little bit of accelerator to it, that also helps create some heat in the concrete, so it helps it cure up a little bit. So this, this concrete won't freeze today, and then, like I said, he's going to go get some hay. He's got some blue tarps he'll put over it after and just cover it all up. So that'll really help hold the heat in it overnight, and he'll probably leave that on there for, you know, three or four days up to a week before he starts building so that'll cure it up once the concrete technically once the concrete reaches 500 psi in freezing cold temperatures like this it can withstand you know be, being frozen without damaging it so it's just better to let it cure up as long as you possibly can it'll reach 500 psi you know if it's kept really warm it'll reach that overnight and definitely reach that in in two days the key is just having the right stuff there, either having concrete blankets and plenty of them with, with lumber to put on top of them so they don't blow off, or having some hay and some tarps to put over it. So there's the first section we got. And it was it was a little difficult to figure concrete on this because there was no real, you know, there was no real uh, set square footage to it. It was, we didn't know how much he was going to have ready. I talked with him a day in advance and he said I'm going to try to level out as much as I can and get as much as I can ready. So we just we ordered two trucks, took a little bit of a guess on the concrete. Uh, the first truck's got more on it than the second truck. He's got ten and a half. Second truck's got about six on it. So he's going to definitely, this first truck's definitely going to do most of it, but um, we're going to get to this second half. Whew, we're getting it. Both float finished today. Nothing. We don't stay in hand trial this or nothing. About 20 degrees out this morning. Concrete is a little bit warm. It could be hotter, but it's going to be okay. This guy's going to cover this up before it gets dark tonight. So I think I think he's going to be okay today. It's just so cold right now, boy. It's cold this morning we've had yet, yet so far this year. We've got another truck coming to finish this. You can kind of see, if you look at the concrete wall here on the front side, right here at the front of the camera, you can kind of see how the footing under it goes up and down a little bit. and That's just how they formed and they poured that footing up over the ledge in areas. So, I mean, the wall right here in the front has got to be, what, 10 or 12 inches high on top of that footing, which is on top of ledge. And then in the back, you can see it's, you know, three and a half to four feet high. So, the ledge was just up and down all over the place. And... You know, if you're wondering about frost here, the frost in Maine, the freezing the ground will freeze down to about 48 inches. But I mean, the ledge, the ledge isn't going to freeze and heave. That's solid, solid bedrock. So as long as they're right on top of that bedrock, it doesn't really matter how deep that footing goes. It's it's not going to heave on them. And then the whole inside, you know, the inside of the basement and everything will be heated. So we don't really have to. They don't really have to worry about cold or frost getting inside the basement they'll they'll probably insulate before they backfill these they'll 
probably put styrofoam down on the outside of these walls. A lot of the code enforcement in Maine is calls for that styrofoam anyway, just like it does under the slab. You know, it's under that that yellow vapor barrier called Stego Wrap. There's star, two inch styrofoam under there too. So most all the new houses up in Maine have to be insulated with styrofoam around the perimeter, under the floors. It's just it's just the way they do it up here. And the styrofoam's really expensive. Like a, a four foot by eight foot sheet of that two inch styrofoam is, you know, 45 bucks a sheet. It was higher than that. It was up almost to 60, but it's come down to 45. And it was, a, it was in the 30s for years and years. And then it bumped up to those... As you guys know, lumber bumped way up there about a year ago, and it's it's been coming down a little bit, but it's still pretty expensive to put styrofoam under and around your house nowadays. I don't know if there's any other states you guys live in that that call for that. Let me know down in the comments, but definitely, definitely most of these guys in Maine make you do that. So we're just getting it screeded. Even, uh, you know, bending over trying to screed with all these layers on is difficult. <laughs> if it seems like we're going a little bit slower than normal, that's why. <laughs> I'm just having a hard time picking my legs up and my boots up. And you can't feel the screed with the, with the tips of your fingers frozen, so that's, that's another challenge right there. <laughs> but we've been doing it, you know, me, Luke, and Darren, we've been doing it together for almost 30 years here in Maine as, as uh, the, the three of us. So it's nothing new. Now the days, the work, as, as you get through November and into December, the work gets a little bit more sporadic. It's not like every day. Uh, some days are just way too cold to pour. Some days, you know, it's snowing, freezing rain or whatever. Um, so some of the pours we'll have, we'll, we'll keep doing outside all year long if we can pick a good day. And they keep, they keep the sub base from being freezing by covering it with stuff. Or they'll... You know they'll end up building and heating it and then we'll come in after the house is up or the or the deck is on they can throw some heat in it and then we'll come in and pour that way but uh, for right now everything's still outside so we're trying to get as much as we can done before we get our first big snowstorm all right so first truck did two-thirds of this second truck definitely had plenty on he's gonna be bringing some back that's all right it's too cold to run out on a day like today Truck, that truck drive, second guy got here, his name's Scott, he said everything, his truck was all froze up, the water was froze, his hose was froze, the drum was froze. I mean, when it's 20 degrees out and they got to travel 45 minutes, just even the windshield factor really freezes up the concrete truck. I don't know what his water temperature is. Supposed to, his water temperature is supposed to be around 100, but I'm sure that cools off quite a bit in 45 minutes on the drive down here. Usually, usually when it's this cold and you got the right water, uh, water temperatures, that concrete right now would be steaming. You'd see steam coming off it. There's none, so um, I'd say the concrete's a little cooler than it should be. Now, when we pour in the winter time like this, you know, usually. Usually a floor like this, you can you can pour it with a 3,000 psi concrete, three quarter inch stone. Um, but we'll bump up the cement, and we'll pour a 4,000 psi in something like this, just because it has more cement in it. And the more cement in the mix in the in, in a yard of concrete, typically it'll it'll generate just a little bit more heat. You know, heat some more cement, more heat. So that'll that'll help the concrete cure up a little bit too. And if we got a power trial, let's say we had to hang out and hand trial a power trial, something like this, we definitely want it setting up as fast as possible. You know, we'd even put more, more accelerator in something like this if we were going to stay to finish it. Um, and it would cure. It would cure. We've, you know, we pour concrete that we have to finish like this on days like today all the time, and we've done it. We've done it even when the the outside temps don't even get up above freezing. You know, they'll stay. It'll stay right at or a little bit below freezing. You can pour and finish concrete that when it's this cold. It's just, you know, it's it's always a risk. Everything's a risk when it's this cold. But if you've done it, you got experience doing it, and you kind of know how the concrete acts and reacts and stuff like this, it's, uh, 
it's not really that much of a risk for us because we've done it so much and we know that we'll be able to get a good finish on it be able to get it covered and hopefully you know even sawed but typically on 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 floors this time of year we'll have to come back the next day and put our saw cuts in them which means coming back and uncovering them but that's just the way it goes this time of year when you live in a in a state where you get a lot of you know three months of winter and you want to pour stuff outside but we charge for all that you know it's just it's an added expense uh, the cost of doing things in the winter goes up the cost of labor goes up the cost of concrete goes up uh, your time involved goes up for sure so definitely can't get as much accomplished in the winter as we can in the summer but we're used to it we plan on it and you know we'll try to We'll hustle our butts off when the when the weather's good and we'll get, you know, we got eight and a half, about eight to eight and a half months of really good weather in Maine for pouring, at least what we consider really good weather. So we'll squeeze in 12 months worth of work in eight and a half months. And then if we have to, you know, if it's really slow and sporadic for the three months of winter, we don't really worry about that too much because we know we got, you know, we know we got all that work in in the eight and a half of good months and it's just been that way for years and years and years and you may wonder well how do you do how do you do 12 months worth of work in eight and a half months well you hustle <laughs> you work every day you can um no days off no i'm just kidding but you, you you work every day you can as much as you can you get as much done as you possibly can in uh, that in that amount of time and you know that that's just the way it is if you want to like living here. Maine's a really, really nice state to live in. The, the summers are really nice. The spring and the falls are, are really decent here. The, there's a lot of lakes. It's, you know, it's more urban. There's, there's, the city life isn't really crazy. The traffic isn't crazy. So we don't have really, you know, we don't have tornadoes or hurricanes or stuff like that. We just have cold winters and snow. But uh, so you put up with it, but you, you learn how to get a lot done in a, in a little amount of time. And that's just how we do it. Okay, we got it. Frozen and all. It's about 30 degrees right now. 8.30 in the morning. So this guy's just going to let this sit all day long. Temperatures are supposed to get slightly above freezing. So the concrete shouldn't freeze today. And then he'll cover it up with some tarps and hay for overnight. It should be fine. But my fingers finally unthawed. The worst part for me is the tips of my fingers get frozen, my gloves. Then I have a hard time moving them around. But we made it. We're going to get out of here, clean up and get out of here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.